These past few weeks have been very busy and I wasn't really able to give my notebooks the attention that I wanted to. But I wanted to do an update to discuss how I've been using all of this and what has been working for me so far. This is my full collection except for some extras that I use like um, a to-do list for example. This is from Paper Shire. And also I use the Kohobonichi paper sometimes just for quick notes that I want to give out or something that is just so temporary that I'm going to throw out. So those are just the extras that I use. But these are my main notebooks that I use. Maybe not daily, all of them, but they contain everything that I need, let's say, to function or to organize. So I really wanted to go through everything and basically go through how I've been using this so far and some thoughts and comments that I have for each one of them. Recently I got my field notes and again it was in the last two weeks and I did not have any time to work on this at all. In the meantime I launched my shop, my Etsy shop, so I was just really busy with other things and I wasn't really able to sit down and really enjoy the notebooks which I really miss and I'm hoping to do that in the next two weeks because my schedule is going to be much more open so I'll be able to work on my personal projects and also spend some more time with my notebooks. So I wasn't really planning to launch my shop yet because I don't even have that many products, mainly stickers, but I was asked to provide these specific ones. So I thought, okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and launch the shop and just put as much as I have right now. Since I was asked to do it, I didn't want to disappoint. So yeah, the main products that I have on the shop are the bullet points. I have this in white paper as well, but I think the craft paper is really the most fitting for uh, the field notes because it just makes sense. Everything is craft, it's the style. I also created some bookmark tabs and they're sort of invisible because there's no lines or anything and this was more like a test product and i don't really have it on the shop right now i do provide it as a freebie but i'm not sure if i will end up putting this on the shop and this is how i use it basically i put i use two of those bookmarks to make one of them i put one in the front and one on the back and i just create a little tab here Again, craft paper because I think it just makes sense in the field notes. And I'm using the field notes uh, brand. So this is their, um, the font that they use, so which is called Futura. So I use that one to make it look a little bit more fitting, like it was made by field notes. It just makes sense aesthetically and it fits perfectly inside the field notes so I thought it was a perfect match. And this is why I created the bullet points. Um, the reason was the key obviously and it's the best way to create an index and a way to categorize all of your notes. You create your key with different colors and then you use in every page. I might not end up putting it here, I might do it on the side, I'm not sure, because I want to be able to see it when I flip through. And I think it really works as an index method. So far, obviously, I only have one page, not even finished, because I just simply did not have the time for this at all. But I'm really happy with how it turned out. I left the first page empty as well because I don't know it's just so so much pressure to fill in the first page and I thought I would leave it empty for something more special and then I just started normally doing my notes. I'm not sure the only criticism that I have for this book is I'm not really crazy about the paper. I don't know what I don't like about it. I'm not sure. 
Mm, I just... Maybe it's the grid also. I find it too big. Like if you compare with the Hobonichi. The Hobonichi, I think, is um, uh, three millimeter and this is five millimeter, I think. Yeah, I don't know. I got used to the smaller grid and this big grid just, I don't know, doesn't make much sense to me. Perhaps I just need to get used to it or I can just use it more for sketching. So I don't know. I think that's that's the only criticism that I have. Overall, these are amazing books. I love the branding. They are so convenient. And they're just for specific things. I mean, it's really for anything you want, basically. But for me, it's best for just ideas and projects. And I specifically didn't want to keep notes in here that I want to come back to. Because... I don't think this is very small so it's going to be completed very soon and I don't want to have to look through a bunch of little notebooks to find the information that I need so I'll just be using this for brainstorming and more like random notes here and there and also when I'm on the road I guess I could use this for notes because it's just so convenient it's so small I don't think I would be able to carry any of these with me other than the field notes so I think that's that's really great for that but when it comes to notes that I want to be able to come back to I use the Hobonichi plain notebook and this is the A6 size again the same way of categorizing notes but without the bullet points I might create this at some point but I don't know, it works just fine to have a little bullet point here, so I don't think I have a problem with that. Again, I didn't have much time to work on this at all. And I just, I really want this to work because this is basically a commonplace notebook that I want to gather all of my notes here, all of the notes that I need to come back to basically. And just important information altogether that I, I really want to have at one place. I don't want to have to go through all of these books or a bunch of little books to find the information that I need. So this one is perfect for that. But again, um, so far I haven't used it as much as I wanted to. Again, for different reasons, I was busy. So I think these two weeks I'm going to focus on this much more. I think the main reason I haven't been using it that much is because I haven't really decided on a specific layout. It's a real problem for me if I if I don't decide on the layout I just sort of hesitate to write into it I don't know I'm just weird I need a specific layout in mind that I like I started doing this simple sort of lines but I just I don't know it's not it doesn't feel right and during the next week I want to really focus on creating a permanent layout for this one because I really want to use this. I think it's going to end up being my most useful notebook. I have high expectations for this one and it's so cute, it's so adorable and small. I really love the size so much. So yeah, I can't wait to use it more during this week. This one, obviously the Hobonichi Weeks. Um, so far, it's still a bit random in terms of style. I started already, like the first day I got it, I just did like a bunch of random things, random stickers, no specific layout, just using different types of stickers and different colors. And it was kind of a mess. This one is the only one that is sort of more consistent. But I was just experimenting to see what I really like, basically, and what works for me. Um, do I know what works for me? No, I still don't. <laughs> I still don't. Um, 
And again, because I have been so busy, I didn't have time to properly experiment and find out what I want. But the thing is, with my planner, I don't really care that much in terms of design or aesthetics or anything like that. I specifically got the Hobonichi wigs because I wanted this to be very simple and straightforward to just use a few stickers and just main, mainly focus on the to-do list and the dates and also keeping track of the month. I haven't been using the monthly so much, um, but I do believe that it's very useful. And I think that overall as a planner, it works for me, but I do think that I need to start using the daily pages way more. I started using them a little bit here and there, but for random like to-do lists or tracking the day and stuff like that. But I want to start using this more consistently. And um, is this all there is? Yeah, I would prefer if this section was a bit bigger. I think it's a bit small. I would prefer if it was, I think the Wix Mega might be the one that has more pages. I'm not really sure. Let me know if you know about the Wix Mega. I wasn't aware of it. That's why I didn't get it. And I think it was, I thought it was the same thing or I didn't understand what it was. So I just got this one. But maybe for next year, I might get that one if it has more daily pages. But yeah, so far it has been working really well for me because I don't I don't really need to put too much effort into it. it obviously, it looks like a mess, but it really works as a planner for me. It's simple. I just put some stickers. I put in my to-do list, not an extensive to-do list, just the basics for the day. And it really helps when I go back to see what I did that day. That's very important to me. And I don't really write anything in terms of mood or feelings or anything like that. I have a different one, a different notebook for that. Um, but it really, really helps to be able to go back and see what I did that day. So as a planner and sort of memory keeping, the weeks is perfect for me. And also I use this extra smaller notebooks here for specific projects. And so far, I don't know if this works for me. Yeah, I don't know if it's working for me yet. Um, but it's I like that it's separate and I don't have to look through all of this to find specific notes. But I don't think I would repeat this style of um, organizing my notes. So yeah, I still have a lot of experimentation to go through. And I've been designing um, a Hobonichi Weeks uh, sticker kit, planner kit, with my style. And I'm hoping to finish it this week so I can use it. And I really, I really like the, um, the Hobonichi planner kits because they just fit perfectly. Like this one, the Coffee Monsters Co. They fit perfectly. They're the right size. And it just makes everything so much easier. I just really want my journal and my planner to match in terms of style. That's why I'm turning my journal doodles into stickers so I can put in my planner as well but yeah I think that just taking any sort of planner kit just solves all the problems and it just makes it so much easier to plan and to also have something aesthetic and pretty but I've been also using other stickers this again is from Paper Shire and it just works really nicely but again, I'm not paying that much attention in aesthetics when it comes to my planner. Next year, I might go for something else, but 
I'm not sure if I'll be keeping the wigs because um, one of the reasons that I got the wigs was because I already have a journal so I thought the cousin would be too much for me because I would have to fill in two journal entries which is not realistic for me but next year I might not be using a journal like this and instead of having this planner and a separate journal I might opt for having the Hobonichi Cousin uh, so I can have both of them together so for this year I think the wigs is perfect for me so this one is from uh, Paper Ground. It was a gift that they sent me and I didn't know how to use it because I already sort of covered most of my needs with the Hoponichi notebooks. So I thought I would use it more like a bullet journal, even though it's a grid, <laughs> but I guess it's bullet journal style. And so far I've been doing sort of random layouts with different stickers. This is Coffee Monsters Co. This is the Blue Coffee Bear, really cute. And this one is the Paper Shire. And these are my stickers. And so far I've been using it sort of like, it's not a daily thing, I don't use it daily. Only when I need some extra space for a to-do list and some more uh, journal entries when I finish my main journal, basically. And this is more for organizing the day and adding a more extensive to-do list. And I guess writing perhaps more personal things because I don't really publish this one. It's a mess anyway. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I'm going to do anything with this. I think I'll just keep doing this, using it as a bullet journal with random entries and random styles. I'm not sure yet, but I have enjoyed using this as well as an extra. And because I don't care about it that much in terms of style, I feel more free to do whatever or to just focus on the content instead of the aesthetics. So it's more like a draft journal, let's say, something like that. Um, but yeah, it really works for me so far, so I'll be keeping it. And each, each of the notebooks has a role to play and there's room for it. Because if I didn't have this one, I don't really have any other place really to write random things and to add more stickers and do sketches or anything like that. I guess I could be using this section, the daily section of the weeks, but with such limited number, I don't think it would work for me. I don't know. I still need to do more experimentation to see what works for me, but for now, it's a good solution. So I'll be keeping this as well. This one, I think I'm going to talk about it last. And this one, again, Hoponichi Plain Notebook, just a different cover. And this is the creative project that I've been working on. I'm not sure if I did an update last time. I think I didn't because I didn't make a video last week. So I'm not sure if I made an update. So these are this is the new spreads, basically. Um, this is the first time that I use both of the pages to do a big spread with the same subject, basically. Uh, the rest of them are more like individual pages. But yeah, this is what I've done so far. And I'm really hoping to do another spread today. I kind of regret doing a double spread because it took me double the time to make it and it was just too much pressure i prefer to have smaller tasks and smaller creative projects and focusing on one spread i find it just much easier to finish it faster and also i do like the fact that they are so different so this one i don't know if i explained before but it's essentially notes that i'm taking for a graphic novel that I'm creating. I don't know if the, the final product is going to look like this, 
but these are mostly notes that I'm taking so I can sort of develop the story and also for me practicing drawing is a huge part of everything that I do because I've always been kind of bad at it and definitely not consistent so doing this I'm not obviously I'm not doing this every day this is this takes a lot, a lot of time. I do this mostly weekly, but I really need the drawing practice. So that's why I'm doing this on paper and not digitally. Regardless, I always do paper first and then digital. I don't know why, it just makes more sense to me and it helps me to develop my skills. And I find digital is easier in a way and especially when I just trace my work instead of doing uh, drafts, digital drafts, and then tracing over those. Again, I don't know. It could be easier to do digital drafts, perhaps, but this is just what works for me so far. And I'm really enjoying it. And the fact that the practice part of this is actually producing something extra. I think it's worth it and I just really enjoy looking back at this today hopefully if I do another spread it would be like a potion recipe that's my plan for this one but I'm not sure if I'm going to use two spreads I prefer not to so this page will be a potion recipe but this page will be something else I think I do prefer that let me know what you think. Do you prefer the consistent two spread illustrations or the single spreads that are more individual? I would love to hear some opinions. I think I like both of them, to be honest. I'm not sure. Now that I'm looking at it, I think I, think I like the two spread one better. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it makes more sense. But um, to make it easier, I'll just focus first on each spread and maybe just follow the pattern or continue with the same content. So if I do that, that would be two pages of potion recipes. So yeah, I might actually make this look like a book page um, like I did with this one. Um, this one is like more like an individual parchment paper yeah, but this one is the one that sort of looks like pages out of a book so I might actually do that in terms of style to do a frame that looks like a big book I think it's called uh, grimoire the book the magic books that contain sort of potion recipes and spells and all of that so yeah i might actually end up i just i just decided this is just how i process information when i talk about it i make decisions in the at the same time so yeah i think that's what i will be doing today or tomorrow perhaps i'm not sure i'm also hoping to film it but i can't promise anything because it sort of puts a lot of pressure on it so perhaps i will do the the draft the sketch and then film while i trace that so yeah i think that just makes it easier yeah but i'm really really happy with this book and um i'm sad that i i wasn't able to work on it during this time but hopefully i'll pick up from here but I think the cover as well is perfect for this kind of project. It just, it fits. So yeah, I really like it. I'm very happy with this. And I know it's going to take, if I do like one per week, it's going to take a long time to finish the whole thing or even go halfway. But I am really enjoying using this. So I'm looking at it as more of a, long-term notebook and i just i can't wait to work on it more i really love this one 
So this is my daily journal. I'm not sure where I left it off last time. I'm just gonna do a flip through. This one, very different style obviously, and I've shown this many times in my videos. I still enjoy using this and enjoy the style. I feel that my style has changed. So if you see this page and let's compare it to, let's say today's page. I don't know, I see some sort of difference. I'm not sure, did, how did my style change? I think here everything is bigger, chunkier, more bold, I guess, I don't know. But definitely sort of shifted a little bit. Yeah, I think it's the frame. Sometimes I do. So I used to upload every day each uh, individual spread. But now I upload every two or three days and I do full spreads like this. So this one is not actually finished. I actually go over uh, the frame here to make it bolder like this one. I think it just looks better. And yeah, I still really enjoy using this and it's definitely my main notebook. I use it daily, it really helps me a lot with many things and I was thinking about it today actually that this journal has three ways that it's helping me. So one way is that I'm journaling so I'm able to process my thoughts and to just write down everything that I'm thinking and just get it out of my head. Second way that it's helping me is by creating this initial to-do lists that sort of set the mood for the rest of the day. I do transfer the to-do list to my uh, weeks planner because whenever I write something, it's not necessarily something that I would do that day. It's more of a gen general to-do list that just sets the intention for the day but that doesn't mean that I will do those things that specific day and the third way that it's helping me is by practicing my sketching and drawing every day and this has helped me so much to develop my skills and after I do the doodles I turn this into illustrations that I then use to create my stickers. So this one I have been using a lot in my planner, but I have not put this up in my store yet because it needs some improvements. And I'm not sure if I want to offer like a generic sticker sheet. I don't like the idea of generic sticker sheets. I prefer something more specific like a planner kit. So I was thinking of maybe offering this as a freebie uh, with the planner kit or something along those lines. But yeah, this is what I do with my illustrations essentially. Not all of them. I haven't done all of them yet. For now, I sort of focus on a specific theme, which is the veggies. And I, I just want to complete sort of the theme because it's one of my favorite themes. And I want to complete a set of products with this specific theme and then move on to something else. But I think it's a very important theme for me for two reasons. One of them is that it sort of encourages me to do more gardening, which is really important to me. And secondly, it's that it reminds me to eat healthy. Veggies, fruit, whatever. It just encourages me to do healthy habits. And because I'm creating a planner kit, I think it's just gonna serve as a daily reminder to either do gardening and plant some seeds or to eat healthier fruits and veggies. And I was trying as hard as I could to focus on that theme when I was doing my doodles. Um, but at some point I just did other things as well. I couldn't focus 100% on doing the veggie theme, let's say. 
but yeah whenever i do the illustrations i just pick the ones that are that specific theme and i turn those into illustrations i will be um creating the rest as well at some point but i prefer to follow themes specific themes and my themes are closely tied to healthy habits and reminding myself of healthy habits that sort of ties in with everything that i do really this whole journey with journaling and all of that started primarily for me to focus on healthy habits and also to improve productivity to get more organized and all of that stuff because that essentially gives you way more control over your life and your health so that's why i started doing all of this especially my journal was primarily for that but i also added the the creative aspect of it which is really important to me as well because hobbies are part of the healthy habits as well definitely helped me to get organized to be more consistent more productive to focus on healthy habits to develop my skills just gave me so much and it's hard to tell from the outside it's so hard to tell that this is so important to me because if somebody looks at this they might say oh it's cute but they don't really know how much this has helped me like this has literally changed my life so i highly recommend if you're not journaling i mean i'm obviously most of the people watching this are probably already journaling but if you're not journaling 100 percent do it 100 percent. one thing that really keeps me coming back is the to-do list because it makes it sort of a need to come back because honestly i cannot function without my to-do list and this is i think this is the main reason that i do this every day i first do the to-do list and then it's just so much easier to uh, fill in the rest of the entry and another thing that keeps me coming back is that it's so easy to do a specific layout daily and there's no decisions involved other than some doodles which that is a creative decision so it's more fun but i found it so exhausting to have to think about a layout every day so creating a standard layout that you're happy with i think is really critical because you just come in you create the layout and then the rest just sort of flows naturally so make it easy in order for it to become a habit but i think the usefulness of it the immediate usefulness of it really keeps me coming back so yeah i'll be continuing this for the rest of the year as well but next year i'm not sure what i'll be doing i might sort of reconsider the whole layout or do a completely different style i'm not sure i also really like this style so perhaps i could turn this style into my journaling style as well for next year because i really want to stay consistent with this one for now but perhaps next year when i dive a little bit deeper into this project it might be useful for me to use the same style for my journal just for practicing purposes essentially and to stay more consistent throughout my notebooks but yeah for now i will keep doing this one it's easy it's fun it's useful so it just works for me right now and finally i want to talk about this one which is my cbt notebook cbt's cognitive behavioral therapy and I was asked by someone on Instagram to talk more about this one and explain a little bit more what I do and how I do it. So the role of CBT is to express how we feel about specific things that happened or 
are happening in general and also to recognize how we feel about them and the, what kind of thoughts we have about those things. So during this process, you will be able to recognize one or more of these thinking errors, right? So you write that down and you basically push yourself, push your brain to rationalize everything. That is not to say that you have to dismiss your feelings or judge them or consider them wrong, but being able to correct, let's say, your thought process really helps you to identify what is really happening. So this is a way for you to understand reality as it is, instead of seeing it uh, through the filter of these thinking errors. So this is the goal of CBT. It is to help you see reality for what it is instead of spiraling out of control with more negative kind of thinking or more extreme kind of thinking like black and white or saying that I, I should have done this, which is really judging yourself very harshly or personalization, which is taking responsibility for everything. Everything is your fault, which is just not true, right? It's not possible for that to be true. Not everything is your fault. It's not reasonable. But in that moment when something happened, you might feel this way. And your brain will be stuck on this idea that everything is your fault. So the process of writing everything down and coming to that conclusion on your own because you have recognized this specific thinking error. It just helps your brain to understand better and to get out of that situation, that really emotionally charged situation. And the last thing that I want to say about CBT is that CBT is a tool, right? So. A metaphor that I thought about that really fits in this situation is so let's say when whenever you wash dishes let's say doing the dishes is a problem let's say so how would you do the dishes you would either use a dishwasher or a sponge let's say but you would definitely use a tool to wash your dishes so why not use a tool for your mental health so if, if you're not using any tools for cleaning dishes and let's say you're trying to wash dishes with your hands, that's just not going to work or it's going to be very awkward, right? Same way, if you don't use a tool for your mental health, it's going to be tough and awkward. So the same way that you use a sponge to wash a dish, you use CBT to rationalize to recognize and to be able to see reality and to stop spiraling out of control with negative thinking. So having said that, that means that every time that we need to process emotions, we need to use this tool. So every time something happens that makes you spiral or makes you feel very negatively about yourself or just creates a really bad mood or depression or more serious dangerous thoughts let's say every time you need to use this tool the same way that you would use a specific tool to do a specific job this is the tool for mental health so it's not that you're gonna do this one time and that's it that's not how it works things happen all the time emotions happen all the time and this is the tool to use for that specific challenge or let's say that specific area of your life. So I wish this would be taught in schools because it really is such an amazing tool. And if you're not able to control your mental well-being, that just makes life a thousand times more difficult and less enjoyable in general. Because all of these thinking errors could become part of your personality, first of all, and also part of your reality. 
And that's just wrong. Why would you have such a flawed way of thinking to filter everything that is happening in your life? The only way to filter things is by looking at them for what they are. So being able to recognize true reality, let's say objective reality. So that's why this is so important. And I keep talking about it because I think everybody should know about this. Everybody should try it and definitely use it as a tool every single time that you need to. And I think that these little notebooks are perfect for that because this can get a little bit emotionally charged. So it's better to, as soon as you finish this, to just archive it and start a new one. But it's also great for documenting certain things. So you can always go back to the month and see what happened that day. And what I do lately is sort of compare the months to see if there's any sort of pattern. So it's important to write how you feel for the day and maybe something that will remind you of what happened that day so you can uh, easily recognize it in case you forgot what happened that day. Obviously, we can't remember everything. So yeah, I think this is really useful for data collection and also for practicing uh, CBT, reminding yourself of thinking errors, filling in the form every time you need it. And honestly, if you don't have time, it's important to fill in the form, but if you don't have time, that's fine. You can still go through the thinking errors and quickly recognize what kind of thinking you have at the time. And it's still going to work, but it works best when you fill in the whole form. So I will leave these two down below uh, so you can copy paste and start using it and let me know if you tried it and how it has worked for you i'd love to hear personal opinions and stories so yeah this is what i have so far this was definitely not a quick update i have to admit but considering that i didn't do a video last week i thought i needed to go through everything in detail and hopefully i'll be able to film one of these spreads because i really want to show the process for this one and it's just so important to have a creative project it makes life so much better but yeah so far i've been very satisfied with all of this and they are really helping me to achieve every single goal that I have set for myself and that's why I think this community is so strong because what we are doing here is not just using pretty stickers and pretty planners what we are doing here is taking charge over our lives and reaching our personal goals our everyday goals so that's why I think this is so powerful Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one.